This week in the interview, Evelina Gephardt, member of the European Parliament. We talk to her about German-French relations. Frau Gephardt, wer Frau Gephardt who will be the next French president? I can tell you who I hope it'll be, Francois Hollande, but I can't be sure. We'll talk about the election in a moment. First, a few questions about yourself. You were born in Paris, but have lived in Germany for decades. Yes, I took dual citizenship. I'm very pleased about that because my French and German identities belong together. That is my European life. You represent the German Social Democrats here at the European Parliament, where we are right now. But you could have also run for the French Socialist Party. As a European, I can run for everyone, for Italy, for Britain or Poland. We are citizens of the Union and can become candidates wherever we choose to live. For me, Germany is home, and so I became a European MP here. You studied linguistics and philology. You've worked as a translator. How did you get into politics? Because of my move to Germany. I actually trained to teach high school German in France. I married my German husband and wanted to continue that job in Germany. But unfortunately, that wasn't permitted. In those days, it was still quite difficult to have professional qualifications from other countries recognized. I decided to do something about it. That was the start. The second thing, as a French woman in Germany, I felt like a complete outsider. Women have a completely different lifestyle here and that made integration very difficult for me. That was something else I wanted to change. I wanted to advance women's equality. You've been involved in European politics for almost two decades. In your experience, how are German Social Democrats and French Socialists different? The entire culture, the traditions are totally different from each other. We German MPs are used to seeking consensus, even across party lines, especially when that's necessary for governing well. The French are much more impulsive, much quicker to make big demands, and that can lead to disagreement between us. But it's also enriching, because we combine our different experiences, and that benefits Europe. Germany and France have worked very closely as the Euro crisis unfolded. Are you pleased with that? I'm always pleased when Germany and France work together. I'm not always pleased with the results, but it does advance the interests of Europe. It advances this peace project of immense importance. When you look at the history of Germany and France, I can only welcome our close cooperation. Where aren't you pleased? I'm not pleased with the fiscal pact as it stands. For example, the current policy is a very one-sided response. Economic growth and job creation are left by the wayside. We can't allow hundreds of thousands of people to lose their jobs in Greece and Spain. We can't allow that in Portugal 30 percent of young people under 25 are unemployed. And we can't allow in Greece that the suicide rate has increased by 40 percent because of the situation. We need other responses than those already provided, so these people also have the opportunity to live as full members of European society. In Europe, many speak derisively of Mercosi to describe the close cooperation between the German Chancellor and the French President. For a time, you advised Nicolas Sarkozy on German political issues. How do you account for the closeness of these two leaders? 
They seem so different. They're totally different, and you see that in their politics. It's been often said that they work well together, but I don't have that impression. When you look behind the scenes at their ideas, you can see there's a continual tug of war to see who's going to get their way. Once they've made their decision, they act as one again. But that's not the way we should be conducting politics in Europe. We need European solutions and not competing national interests where there's political bartering. That's not what people need. France is in the middle of a presidential election. No candidates will win in the first round, so who do you expect to be in the runoff? I expect François Hollande and Nicolas Sarkozy in the runoff. Some of the other candidates are quite strong, but I think French voters will want to decide between those two. The socialist challenger, François Hollande, has had a big lead in the polls, but Nicolas Sarkozy has been catching up. Why is that? It's because Sarkozy has been playing a very nasty game, trying to win over the far right with law and order and anti-foreigner rhetoric. That's actually the reason I quit my role as advisor. I said there's no way I can work with someone like that. Someone who promotes policies like that against Romanis and Sinti. He wanted to expel them, even though it breaches European law. I think he's appealing in a very populist way to right-wing extremist elements. That could become very problematic and a burden for France in the future. Critics of François Hollande say his message is a kind of left-wing populism, making promises that can't be paid for. Does François Hollande's platform add up? You can't do everything you promise, because the political framework is always changing and always creating new issues. That's a fact of life, and it's also a fact of politics. But he's spoken about putting French politics on a new path, and I think that's great. At the moment, policies dealing with social issues, economic growth and job creation have all been left alone in France. That's one of the problems the country faces. François Hollande says that has to change and that's the correct response. But many are asking whether he can finance his promises without new debt. That depends. It also has to do with setting priorities. You can say, I'm going to spend some more in this area and perhaps spend less elsewhere. Military spending is one example he's spoken about. You have to know what you want to achieve. The goals of François Hollande are different to those of Nicolas Sarkozy. During the election campaign, he said he'd stop the fiscal pact and renegotiate. He wants to renegotiate, that's correct. But when you hear what he says in French, it could also mean he wants to add something to it, not throw the whole thing out. But I think at some point we'll have to rethink some things in the fiscal pact. It could be like the 80s, when Lionel Jospin unexpectedly became president. With the Amsterdam Treaty, he finally ensured that social policies became an important component of European politics. That was totally unexpected then. I like it when the unexpected happens in politics. Germany's Social Democrats, the SPD, support the fiscal pact, and its leaders say that Hollande's threat to renegotiate the fiscal pact is naive. What's your position on that?
I don't agree with Per Steinbruch. I have a different opinion. But I think, just as the SPD leader Sigmar Gabriel himself said, we have to think carefully about making sure we can always improve the pact. And I return to the topic of economic growth and job creation. Those are the important areas. We make policies for citizens and not for the banks. But amending the pact with a growth clause is different from renegotiating it. The political message appears to be, enough with austerity, we have to start spending again. No, Francois Hollande certainly didn't mean that. He wanted us to think carefully about the consequences of these decisions. We have to save, that's true. We also have to straighten out our budgets. That's important for the entire EU, also for Germany and France. But we have to think about progress and moving forward in politics, about having innovation. We have to look at the future of industrial policies, look at how and where we can responsibly create jobs. In what areas do we want to see advancement? In climate protection and renewable energy, for example? Not in weapons manufacturing. Those are questions that exist and that we have to tackle. Those are the things we have to think about. And we can do that together in Germany and France, Social Democrats definitely should. Let's say François Hollande becomes the next French president. Can he work with Angela Merkel? During the campaign, it seemed they didn't particularly like each other. Merkel and Sarkozy didn't particularly like each other at the start either. Neither did Chirac and Schröder. But they got used to each other. But we don't want them to get too cozy for too long. In 2013, we want a new German chancellor who can work with François Hollande and better implement social democratic policies. Evelina Gebhardt, Franco-German member of the European Parliament, thank you for speaking to DW.